want to get some opinions on some rumors that are circulating about Toyota right now. And I want to get some opinions on what these rumors are and if I'm reading into it too far. Essentially, what has happened in the last couple of years is in 2018, I think it was around 2018, Toyota had patented a new type of engine. Toyota USA had an engine patent that was some sort of a high compression engine. And so, and it was had the ability to suppress smoke. So I'm not a mechanical engineer. I did see some opinions from people that were suggesting that it could be Toyota had found a way to run a diesel system without a regen system or a particulate system, like what haunts most modern diesels. You have the system where you have to add def fluid. It makes it to where the truck runs cleaner and it can meet EPA standards. One of the theories behind this patent was that Toyota had come up with a diesel that could run without all of the nonsense. I just recently learned about this one. In 2019, Toyota released an image and the image was through the steering wheel of the next generation 4Runner. And it was just a regular image, but if you look at the tachometer, the tach redlined at 4,500 RPM. That's signs of a diesel. So now Toyota is releasing videos on their YouTube channel. And one of these videos is about diesel engines and the way diesel engines work. Doesn't sound like a big deal because they did one on forced induction, superchargers and turbochargers. They did one on gasoline engines, the basics of an engine. And they did one on diesel engines. Now, in that video about diesel engines, they're talking about how they tow better, their fuel economy, their low end torque, all these things. They're talking about the benefits of a diesel. This is coming from a company that does not produce a diesel for the US market. They do everywhere else in the world, let's not forget that. And they've been doing that for a long time. So they definitely know what they're doing with a diesel motor. So it was interesting to me to see that they have a video out on the benefits of diesel and just explaining what a diesel is when they don't sell one. Toyota doesn't want you to go down the road and buy a Ram because it's a diesel. They wouldn't do that. That doesn't make It doesn't make sense why they would re release a video talking about the advantages of something that they don't sell here. Toyota's being vocal to other companies about how they need to pump the brakes on going full electric because there will be hurdles that every company will be forced to deal with because of that, because everybody's trying to switch to the same thing too fast. And so they've made it known that they don't plan on just jumping and going to electric right away. So there, there's a lot going on right now and it'll be interesting to see what they're about to release and they're putting these videos out right before a Tundra comes out. Let's get into the Tundra a little bit, the 2022 Tundra. I personally think it's a good looking truck. It looks a lot like a Tacoma, a big Tacoma. Yes, I see the GMC similarities, but when that thing's got some tires on it and a camper on the back of it, that's gonna be a cool truck. With the new Tundra, some of the leaked specs were a towing capacity of 12,500 pounds and one variation, which is, will probably be the hybrid. I believe the actual listing from this post that I saw said 35 miles to the gallon, but let's say 30 to be, to be safe. That's huge. If that truck can actually achieve that and you can even get 20 miles to the gallon once it's all modified out with some bigger tires and stuff, of course, you know, we're getting off in the weeds here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That's gonna be a big deal, but how Toyota is achieving this Maybe they're just coming out with the V6 with the twin turbo like everybody else is, or maybe they are completely rethinking this and they've developed a diesel for their other vehicles. And maybe it's just a diesel for the Tundra. Maybe their big boy is going to get the diesel and the other trucks are just going to get a four cylinder with a twin turbo or a single turbo. And that's what we're going to get. I have contacted Toyota now for an opportunity to see the Tundra up close when they start letting people check it out and test drive it and stuff like that. I'm still a small channel. I don't expect them to take me too serious, but I do want to check out the new Tundra and I will put that video up as soon as I possibly can, as soon as I get an opportunity to see one. But the new Tundra is gonna have a rear coil suspension, which is gonna be huge for off-roading. Hopefully that's a sign of what's gonna be coming on the Tacoma as well, because it, it's just going to be a better, more flexible suspension system for those trucks, they'll have a nicer ride. There'll be a lot that comes from that. But some of those images that they released also made it look like it could potentially have a locker now, which would be a big deal. Having a rear locker in their TRD Pro, that'll be that'll be awesome. The interior looks great. I don't, I don't really get that excited about interior myself. I'm paying attention to the suspension and the engine. And I'm very curious what they are doing with that truck. 
So I think that's gonna be a cool platform to build on. Maybe the new diesel is just in the Tundra, maybe it's gonna be in the Sequoia, maybe we'll get a variation of the Land Cruiser in the next couple years, it'll come back, maybe not. But it'll be interesting to see what they do. The Land Cruiser sold so poorly here that they discontinued them, as everybody now knows. But it might be interesting if part of the reason they discontinued them is because they're getting ready to do something with their other vehicles that'll sort of make up for that. The Land Cruiser is the toughest vehicle you can buy from Toyota. But that may not be necessary here. I've put this FJ through hell for 10, 11 years now, and it's still kicking. I mean, I'm over 204,000 miles now, and... Uh, you know, it's an old truck, and it's it doesn't drive like it's new anymore, but it's put up with a lot. So how much do we really need a Land Cruiser when we have very, very reliable vehicles that are already sold here from Toyota? So that might be the perspective they're taking. What does the American market truly need? Sales numbers has a lot to do with it. Maybe I'm off base with my whole uh, hopes and dreams of a diesel here, but I think anything's possible, especially because they've been pushing back against electric vehicles and they've been building diesels for years and years. It's just we haven't seen them here. I'm looking to build a new truck in the future, so I don't rule anything out. And if Toyota comes out with a diesel, I mean, come on, man. Maybe there's no chance in hell, but it will be cool to see what they're going to come up with. They have to meet EPA requirements, and they also have to get on the bandwagon with more fuel economy. And one of the ways they could do that would be with a diesel engine. But it would have to be a diesel engine unlike what anybody else has built. Toyota wouldn't want to take their reliable reputation, convert everything over to a diesel with a DEF system on it, and suddenly have people with Toyotas with problems, because then they're just like everybody else. From what I've seen, 2022 is the Tundra, 2023 is the Forerunner, 2024 is the Tacoma. Toyota has also shifted to a global platform structure, and maybe I'm understanding this incorrectly as well, but I read a lot about this stuff, and I'm pretty sure I'm understanding what's happening, is the trucks will basically have more in common than they did previously. I believe this could mean that like the Hilux and the Tacoma will share more parts than they did previously. Because common misconception is that the Tacoma is a American version of a Hilux. And that is way far from the case. The Tacoma is a light duty truck compared to a Hilux. The Hilux is a pretty heavy duty truck for what it is. The Tacoma can carry 1200 pounds legally. A crew cab Tacoma with a five foot bed, five and a half foot bed, has a payload of, I think it's around 1,182 pounds, just under 1,200 pounds. That's four men my size and a cooler with all of their stuff in it for one weekend, you're, over, you're overloaded. That's without tires built onto it, tents and stuff like that. That's just the people. You're getting close to being over payload just like that. A Hilux has a payload of like 2,300 pounds. So it's, it's a full, it's like 1,100 pounds more. Something else with the Hilux, is the Hilux, the way it's built, and of course a lot has to do with braking, cooling, the engine, but the Hilux has a payload of 22, 2300 pounds, while the Tundra here in the United States only has a payload of like 1500 pounds. So it's amazing what the difference is. So what I'm getting at is the frame is definitely going to have an effect on what the payloads are. So I'm, I'm totally speculating here, but if Toyota is going to a global platform, everything's going to basically ride on some of the same structuring. I'm sure it's for to save them money. What I'm getting at is that if the Hilux and the Tacoma now are sharing parts, we could start to see a different vehicle and perhaps even shared engines. If Toyota can make a reliable engine that'll meet EPA standards here that runs on diesel, they may start sharing that with the rest of the world. But I'm curious what you guys think about all this. Is there a shot in hell that Toyota is going to make diesels and sell them here? What do you think? What do you think is going to be the next thing? You think it's just going to be a V6 with the twin turbo and the Tundra? There probably will be a variation of that. Tell me what you think about this. Maybe I'm way off base. And uh, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and until next time.